Long ago, three and a half editions lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when 4E attacked. Only Pathfinder, master of all the fiddly little rules text, could stop it. But when the world needed it most, the rulebook just did not have a very good index. A hundred splat books passed, and Paizo discovered a new attempt at recreating the Warlock, an occult class called the Kineticist. And although its damage output and narrative agency options are great, we still have a lot to learn before we're ready to blast anything. But I believe there's rules for that. You may remember that I promised in last week's video on how to build your very own avatar in 5e that I'd be trying to tackle that same idea in Pathfinder this week. Or hey, maybe you don't. Who even knows when you're watching this? Not me. And so here we are doing just that. But along the way to that goal, let's take the opportunity to demystify the particularly challenging collection of charts, lists, and subtables that Pathfinder calls the Kineticist. Mechanically speaking, the Kineticist may be the single most cohesively full-featured class in all of Pathfinder. Damage output, narrative agency, exploration utility, battlefield mobility, attack adaptability, check, 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 and check. It's all there. If you can figure out how to put it all together. Building one sometimes feels like you're trying to put back together a pen that you borrowed from a friend. You saw it working a second ago and you're pretty sure you still have all the parts, but somehow it's just not working right. And this definitely isn't a problem for everybody. I've seen plenty of people build a kineticist just fine, but I've also definitely heard a lot more about people's frustrations with this class than I have any other. So if that sounds like you, hopefully some of this will help. All right then, to kick it all off, what actually is a kineticist? And the answer is, Story time! Back in the days of 3.5, before Dungeons & Dragons had gone through quite so many reincarnation cycles of its own, certain kinds of players started thinking that while using magic and imagination to get through encounters was totally cool and all, wouldn't it be even cooler to use it all to just blow stuff up every day? These players eventually got their heart's desire in the form of the Warlock, a class whose main shtick was the ability to cast something called an Eldritch Blast, which does exactly what it sounds like, just, you know, eldritchishly. Completely at will, with no per day limits. Tragically, however, the 3.5 Warlock was not part of the OGL content that Paizo was allowed to port over into Pathfinder, and despite occasional attempts over the years to reclaim some of that same feeling, the sad truth was that Pathfinder had a conspicuously all-day blaster caster shaped hole in its heart. Enter Occult Adventures, debuting five classes based on 19th century fascinations with spooky, creepy, psychic, occult magic stuff, and also the Kineticist. Unlike normal spellcasters who gracefully sculpt magical essence into polished spells, a Kineticist has a direct line to the energies of one of the planes of the Great Beyond, and by letting those energies course through them with reckless abandon, they they can channel some of that planar power into useful manifestations called wild talents. Now, you might presume that the first step in building our own personal boiling font of elemental enthusiasm would be to pick exactly which element it is that they're boiling over with. But actually, well, no, I mean, I mean was there's no reason we, we could do that first. Nah, stats. First, since kineticists route their roiling energy straight through their own living bodies, our key class attribute is, believe it or not, constitution. Our wild talent save DCs are calculated with it, and we'll even add it as flat damage on some of our blasts. Speaking of, all these kinetic blasts we plan on making are ranged attacks, so we should have dex follow as our second highest stat. Also, lest we forget, we're on a mission to restore our, I mean, to recreate a build that faithfully reminds us of the Avatar. To that end, nothing gets across the message, I'm a wise, intelligent, reincarnated being who will draw on the experiences of my past lives better than playing as one of the Samsaran who happened to be a race of wise, intelligent, reincarnated beings who draw on the experiences of their past lives. Works out pretty well, right? Anyway, we'll get bonuses to Wiz and Int, which is great, but alas, we will have to take a minus two to Khan. But hey, it's not like Aang wasn't known for a debilitating spinal injury now and again. Plus, thanks to their shards of the past racial trait, Samsarans can pick any two skills and not only gain a plus two bonus on them, but also treat them as class skills too. Luckily, it looks like our past dead self was way better at, say, diplomacy and sense motive than we are. Thanks, dead me. Okay, good. Now we can go back to that whole element picking thing again. To be a little bit more specific, at level one, we get to choose an elemental focus that will determine just what kind of attacks, abilities, and defenses we'll have to abide by and work with all the way into level seven. We can pick from, surprise, surprise, the four elemental plane elements of water, fire, earth, or air, ether, which represents not bending, but telekinesis, actually, and wood or void, which, through some mild shenaniganery, match up to positive and negative energy. Our immediate payoff for this decision will be a matching basic manipulation talent specific to our element, which amounts to something like a specialized prestidigitation, and our element's basic kinetic blast. Or one of them, at least. These basic blasts come in two flavors, physical and energy-based. Some elements only have one or the other variety, in which case that's what you get, but air, void, water, and wood all have one basic blast of each type to their name, and you'll have to pick which one to take now and which one to maybe come back for at level 7. Both energy and physical blasts will scale and damage every other level, but physical blasts have a very clear edge on damage output. Energy blasts, however, get to target touch AC instead of full, and that extra accuracy will almost certainly make up for the lost damage. As an example, in the case of our under-construction 
Avatar, let's look at the two basic blasts offered by Air. There's the physical Air Blast, which will target normal AC and can roll for 1d6 plus 5 damage, or there's the energy-based Electric Blast, which only needs to hit a touch attack, but also only rolls 1d6 plus 1. Given Aang's history with Lightning, it seems the safer bet to go with Air Blast here. Before we get into the rest of what makes a Kineticist tick, we should look at the class feature that not-so-secretly runs the entire rest of our decision-making, Burn. Of all the somewhat tricky little parts of the Kineticist, Burn is the one that we'll have to keep the closest eye on. The basic premise is that while we can handle drawing enough elemental energy to make our basic attacks without difficulty, we have to push ourselves to take in actually painful amounts of energy to try anything fancier. Thus, to use or add on almost any ability besides our basic Kinetic Blast, we must take on as many points of Burn as it lists in its cost. The kicker is that every time we take a point of Burn, we take one non-lethal damage per character level as well. So for example, taking one Burn at level 3 means we take three non-lethal damage, but taking two points of burn at level 5 means taking 10 non-lethal damage, and it'll all act and track just like normal non-lethal damage, except there's absolutely no way to cure or recover from it until we sleep for a full night. The wear and tear of overextending ourselves accumulates throughout the day. At first glance, this seems like a pretty easy thing to live with. Let's just, you know, never use anything that requires burn to work and keep all of our precious body meat fresh and unspoiled. I mean, this is the obvious play, right? Not doing the thing that causes us physical harm? And I mean, yeah. Theoretically, we could do it like that, but we will in fact be left with only our basic kinetic blast left to use, and that is such a waste of a kineticist. Here, let's look at the progression of our other two main class features. On odd levels, including first, we pick up an infusion wild talent. These are abilities that we can add to our basic kinetic blast to alter their effects, substance infusions, or method of delivery, form infusions. Let's say we pick up this pushing infusion, a substance talent. Now, when I add it to my air blast, I get to make bull rush checks against people I hit. Ah, but only if I take a point of burn to do it. Aside from infusions, we also get utility talents on even levels. These are class abilities that are not related to kinetic blasts and often even work out of combat, like this here air's leap talent. Unlike infusions, there are a decent number of utility talents that won't bother you for burn to use them, but clauses such as this one that allow you to take on a point or two of burn for extra effects are pretty common. While we're looking at this talent entry, a quick note. Every utility and infusion is posted with both a level and one or more elements listed beside it. As you might expect, the element list tells you what utility talent or infusion is compatible with. However, the level listing is a little trickier. It actually represents an effective spell level. And just like actual magic spells, it scales only from 1 to 9. To pick up a talent of either kind, your kineticist level must be double the listed effective spell level. So all those super nifty level 3 utility talents? Strictly forbidden until we get to level 6. Between the unintuitive level gating and the struggle of picking our way down a list just to find a talent that matches our element at all, it seems fair to say that the utility talent and infusion listings are kind of miserable to use. As a bit of a side tip, instead of using these frankly miserable walls of text to find wild talents, you can only always use an online talent sorter like this one, which was made by the Paizo forums user Shiroi. It's helped me a bunch, so I've put the link to access it in the description below. Just switching to sortable online lists for ease of picking through talents solves 70% of the confusion associated with making a kineticist, I swear. So the idea that we might be able to avoid taking burn by simply not doing burny things really won't cut it, I'm afraid. There's just too much to gain from it. However, there are a number of ways that we can stave off burn temporarily. The first and easiest is by using a feature called Gather Power. If on our turn we use our move action to stand dramatic still and whip our element of choice around us in a stylish yet furious frenzy, we can reduce the total burn cost of a kinetic blast we make that same turn by one. If we DBZ it up for longer, say for a whole round, we can reduce the blast by two burn even. And heck, we just waited a whole round, so we probably won't mind gathering just a teeny bit more power with our move action again to bring our total burn discount to minus three, right? That's completely fine as long as we go for our kinetic blast with that one remaining standard action this turn. Otherwise, we lose all that power and have to start gathering again. Starting at level five, we also get infusion specialization, which reduces the burn cost of an infusion added to a blast automatically, and that scales to higher discounts every few levels. The one last bow to tie on burn as a mechanic is its surprising benefit payoff, Elemental Overflow. Starting at level 3, as long as you've taken at least one burn, all of your attacks get plus one for the day and all of your damage gets double that bonus. Going above one burn won't give you more bonuses, yet, so just think of it as a participation threshold. By using one burn ability early on, you actually hit like a full BAB character all day, and the upper bound of this threshold then scales by plus one every three levels. So at level 6, as long as you've taken a minimum of two burn, you can sit at plus two attack and plus four damage. Not bad, right? Well, that was all a little bit exhausting, but hey, bringing elemental justice to the world isn't a slacker's job, now is it? Oh right, we've got one more finishing touch to put on our avatar. The bit where he learns how to manipulate more than just air. You know, the avatar part. No worries, we've got a utility talent for that. Past life evoker. Once a day, we can take one point of burn to learn and use any single basic blast from any single element for a minute. A far cry from a full-blown avatar state, maybe, but I believe that I can make this joke work a third time. Ta-da!
Howdy everybody, and this is the part of the video where I talk about the last video, because that's what people do. The last video was how to be the Avatar in 5th edition, and we went with the Monk of the Four Elements route there. And y'all had a lot, a lot of suggestions on what to do instead, and apparently it was literally anything. Um, uh, so this has always been a problem, so I started off in Pathfinder, and apparently it's still kind of the same in 5th edition. Monks, man, just never really get the right end of the stick. Like, it's just so hard to make a monk that's, I don't know, optimal or whatever. I liked a lot of y'all's suggestions. What I was thinking about when going for the monk, monk was just thinking of all the super cool choreography and just like how much martial arts kind of meant to Avatar as more of a franchise, I guess, than to Aang necessarily specifically. But uh, it kind of does it all. It's it was definitely about the, like, the idea of just having like all four elements under the control of, of your discipline. But no, I liked a lot of your ideas. I think I haven't ever played a sorcerer in 5e. I don't know if they're good or not. A lot of y'all have been suggesting druids as alternate builds on a lot of these videos. I've never played a druid in anything ever, so I should probably look into those at some point. Um, I've also been enjoying y'all's extra comments on uh, things to do and other videos, like a speed build for, for Pathfinder, like a speedster kind of character, that'd be kind of fun. Uh, somebody suggested doing crafting rules in Pathfinder, and that's, oh, that's not fun, but it's probably very useful. We, I'm definitely going to do that one at some point. Anyways, yeah, guys, thanks for your ideas. Um, keep them coming. Always love to hear what uh, uh, different ideas you have, even if they are better than mine, because, hey, that's how it works, right? Next time you see me sitting in this chair like this, I will be uh, listening to all of y'all uh, tell me everything I did wrong with the Kineticist, so that'll be fun. Actually, I think the process of it is going to be very good. It will be. It's great. I promise. Myself.